Hey everybody, welcome back in. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus and we still will be for just a little bit longer. We're in the middle of a big transition. We'll have a uh, an explanation to all of that and we'll have a little breaking news uh, recording to let out for you guys and fill you guys in on all of the big the big news, the big move and everything that we're doing. Um, but for now, for the time being, we had an amazing time. I had the opportunity to be able to talk to the women's bantamweight champion of the world, Raquel Rocky Pennington. I was very excited to be able to talk to her. She's super down to earth, an extremely fun interview, one of my favorites. Uh, I absolutely enjoyed the time that I had to be able to discuss her career, her journey, uh, and everything leading up to becoming the women's bantamweight world champion. It was absolutely amazing. So uh, I know you guys are going to enjoy this one. We will be back with our regular schedule very soon. But for the time being, let's go ahead and get into the interview with Raquel Rocky Pennington. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very excited. We've got a very special one because, as you know, we like to bring in big guests whenever we bring guests on the show. And today we have an amazing one. She's been in the UFC for over 10 years. Uh, she's one of the toughest women in the world. And she's now become the newest women's bantamweight champion of the world by beating Myra Bueno Silva back in 297, uh, UFC 297, back on January 20th. Whether you're just a casual fan or a diehard fan of the UFC or MMA in general, you know her name. It is Raquel Rocky Pennington. Raquel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you're, you're looking good. You're looking healthy. Uh, looks like you, you've, you've healed up just fine. And uh, you, it, it didn't really feel like you took a whole lot of damage from that fight. Uh, you just, you really owned the match the entire time. Yeah, no, I uh, I took a couple elbows to the left side. So I had a little black eye yeah. um, and a little scratch on my nose. Other than that, uh, you know, from going to the ground, uh, I don't know if a lot of people realize that the uh, canvas and the octagon, it, it feels like sandpaper. So I had some pretty gnarly um, mat burn on my knees, and that probably took the longest to heal and made my showers for the most uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something, too, that if you've never been uh, in in the octagon or just in a fight in general, it's it's hard to tell. You know, I feel like if you're just somebody that watches on the couch and you've never been in that, uh, it's it's hard to tell how difficult and how much energy it's draining because sometimes it just looks like you guys are just sitting there not doing anything like for example i think it was in the first round when she was on your back how much yeah. energy that's taking from her and from you uh it's just it's stuff that that i think yeah, kind of gets overshadowed in the sport oh 100 percent. you know a lot of fans they are constantly or people i should say um they're constantly criticizing us as athletes and saying different things um you know everybody wants to see the blood they want to see knockouts they want to see people going to sleep they want to see the brutality of everything uh, but when it comes to it, I mean, it's it's an intense sport, regardless of what you're doing. If you're sitting there wrestling, the energy that comes out from it, jujitsu, the energy that comes out from it, the more like the sweatier you get, it's harder to hold on to your opponents. Yeah. You're absolutely fatigued. There's a lot that's going into it, you know, taking punches, throwing kicks, constantly going against somebody else's body who they have just as much adrenaline as you have. Like, there's a lot. And I mean, five, five minute rounds, that's a really long time. You know, a lot of people... They tend to boo if you're clenching up on the cage or doing different things, but that clench work is a lot harder than it looks. It may look like you're resting upon each other, but you're not. I mean, it's full-blown muscle from two people going against each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely something. I mean, it, unless unless you've been in this situation, uh, you just don't understand how much it takes. But I guess let's first start off. I mean, how does it feel to be a champion. I mean, you've, you've worked for a really long time. You've had a very tough road. You've gone against some, some incredible opponents overall. I mean, has it sunk in yet that you are the champion of the women's bantamweight uh, division? Um, you know, it's kind of crazy because it's like initially at first I was sick going into that fight. Um, so I mean, coming home and then I stayed sick until almost the last week of February. And then of course, Chisha and the baby got sick. Like it was a terrible time. So, you know, just kind of feeling sick. I didn't embrace it as much. Um, I just wanted to feel better and feel like myself, but it's been soaking in a lot more. And, you know, growing up, my uh, entire family, they've always called me Rocky and champ. And uh, like, I don't know. Now when they call me champ, it's like, dang, I'm re I really am the champ. And the cool part is, is, you know, I see all these fans and even just the young kids or like my family, uh, my close friends, 
and their excitement. And that's really helped to like soak it in a lot more going to the gym, um, being at meet and greets and just the things that I've done has really like, you know, it's, it's set it in a little bit more, but it's still surreal. Like you work so hard at something for so long. Um, and then to finally accomplish it. And it's like, it's on a huge spectrum. It's not just, Oh, I'm the champ of this organization or like this small place or I'm the champ in the United States. Like I'm literally the champion in the world of the world. And I have the largest target in my back. Like it's uh it's pretty surreal, but it's yeah. really cool. I mean, it's, it's something too. I mean, I, I, I haven't been in your, your shoes, so I, I don't, I don't know what that's like, but I can just imagine <laughs> it's, it's just something that you, you go throughout your day and then every once in a while it pops up where somebody brings it up and, man, yeah, I, I, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm still there. But, yeah, absolutely. But let's let's back it up. I want to first back up to when you first started. You started around the age of nineteen, getting into MMA, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, so what what got you into fighting? What was the the spark that said, you know, I, I'm Raquel Pennington, and I'm going to become a fighter, uh, and then turn this into a career? Especially back then, because you were one of the first first women to make it to the UFC. And yeah. then to blow up on the scene uh, the way that you have, and you've been, you've really, I mean, you're going to go down as one of the legends in the sport too. Uh, and so what, um, what kind of started that for you to, to get into fighting? A broken back and a joke towards my mom, <laughs> to say <laughs> the least. Um, you know, I ended up breaking my back snowboarding. I didn't take any of my athletic scholarships to uh, college. I took an academic scholarship. I was going through rehab and I was just at the gym um, working out one night. My mom was with me. The first team I started with, they were training in a little yoga studio in the back. They were training on those uh, quarter-inch puzzle mats, um, doing judo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling. And they're slamming each other around. It just looked intense. Uh, growing up, our friend at the time, her dad was a boxer, and then her brothers were boxers. So I went to a few boxing matches, and I remember asking my mom if I can box. Uh, and her, her and my dad were like, no, you're too pretty, and your teeth are way too nice. So I just grew up being a huge tomboy. Uh, the guys in the neighborhood called me Rocky McDaniel. My cousin, he's five months older than me. Um, we They called us Chip and Dale growing up, and we were constantly fighting. Um, but other than that, I never had any like experience. I just I grew up being an athlete uh, since the age of five. Basketball, volleyball, softball, um, <clears throat> you know, cross-country, track, gymnastics, like doing all the different things. And... Um, I don't know, just kind of working out that night. I seen the team and just the intensity of it. And I told my mom, I was like, I'm going to go do that. And <clears throat> I think she just thought it would be something good to get me going again. So she's like, let's go talk to the coach. We went in there. We talked to the coach. Um, he explained what the sport was, what they were doing. He's like, yeah, we train at this time. Come in tomorrow. Check it out. And, you know, I walked into the gym the next day. My first training session ever was sparring. Like, I just got fed to the wolves. He hands me some um, hand wraps, and I was like, what do I do with these? And he's like, oh, you wrap your knuckles. Oh, you should have seen those hand wraps. That okay. are, it was one of a kind, and I was like, all right. And then uh, I got on the mats. He's like, okay, you could take your socks off. And I was like, you go barefoot? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, Ugh, okay. Um, it was just foreign territory, and I got in there, and you know, I started doing what I figured I was going to do. I was looking around, watching everybody, and I was like, all right, I got this. Uh and I absolutely, I love challenges. I fell in love with it, um, became addicted from then. Uh, you know, the next day after that, the coach sat down with me. We, like, actually, like, focused on, like, footwork, um, different things. He showed me how to wrap my hands. And then uh, four months later, I fought my first fight. And now here I am 14 years later. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an incredible journey, too, to think from the very beginning. You know, you didn't even know how to wrap your hands. Now, <laughs> now, now where you're at, yeah, I, I know what that's Crazy. like too. Cause, uh, you know, when I was younger, I was, I always wanted to play hockey, never got into a, a team or anything, but I'd play like recreational or out in the driveway with my brother or something. So wrapping a tape, uh, you know, around your stick was that way. Uh, and then whenever I was a, a senior in high school, I had some buddies that were in, and they were kind of training for MMA and stuff like that and doing mixed martial arts. I was like, I want to go try it out. So I, I went to their gym a couple of times and. Uh, yeah, the, the first first time I was like, I, I didn't know you had to wrap them. Like, I just thought you put the gloves on, you're good to go. Me <laughs> so, too. Yeah, it's, it's totally, totally brutal. Like it's looking, you know, the first time you do it. Um, I, I guess, you know, w when you think of your, your journey, it's been a long journey to get where you've gotten to. Uh, and it's the story you just told. 
an amazing journey at that. What was the most difficult part about your journey leading up to where you're at now? Um, you know, for one, I came into a male dominant sport. So as a female athlete, you know, there was a lot of criticism. There was people constantly saying like, uh, you know, that I don't belong here. I'm not going to be able to do things. Uh, the opportunities weren't very big for women. Um, so I think that was a lot of it at the beginning, uh, going into the gym and just, you know, being treated like a female, like that wasn't going to help me grow. Like I needed to be treated as a person with a passion. Um, and, uh, so I think those were the biggest struggles at the beginning. And then, you know, throughout my career, there's been different ones as an athlete, sustaining different injuries. Um, you know, I've been that athlete who I've never been handed anything. I've worked from the ground up, uh, which is why I'm so proud of my career. You know, um, that, uh, I mean, I, I would probably say those are the biggest ones. And then of course, like the sport ranks the highest of highs and lowest of lows. Um, you know, learning how to overcome those and pick yourself back up. Um, I, uh, I live in Colorado Springs and at the time, you know, as my career started to really kick off, there wasn't, there really wasn't any gyms here to like train at and do stuff. So it was about like making moves, um, you know, trying to figure out what was best for me. Uh, there it's just, it's been a journey to say the least, yeah. like a very, very long journey. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine too. And, and like you said too, I feel like when women were first introduced, like you said, it was at the end of the UFC, it was just kind of a, I feel like there was kind of that disrespect towards it and, and I might've been part of it. Uh, and, and, and so looking at it, I mean, but as time went on and you saw how competitive you guys are, I mean, it's, we, we were just talking about this. I think it was the, the, uh, 297 or 299, one of the two, when we were talking about some of the fights uh, coming up here on the show and me and one of my co-hosts, we were talking about, man, like the women, a lot of times bring more energy to the cage. They bring, uh, it, it's not, it's not as, as boring most of the time. I feel like you guys bring a lot more to it. And I feel like that's finally started to become uh, a, a realization to, to fans yeah. of the sport. Like, man, they're not just two women and they're having a cat fight. They're two women who are trained uh, in, in whatever, uh, whatever fighting style they're in. And, and they're, they're coming in there for blood, just like any man would. And so I, I think that's, that's something I know you as your, you yourself, you're one of them that has definitely brought that, that realization to the, to the sport. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I feel like as a female fighter, like we have a lot more to prove, um, you know, uh, there's that constant doubt, um, still, you know, I mean, the sport's still evolving. It's definitely grown. Um, there's more acceptance to it, but there's still a lot of controversy when it comes to females fighting. Um, and I think from just being those women and, you know, I mean, us girls, we could be feisty. So yeah. it's just a natural thing too. Um, but I definitely think the girls, you know, they come out there and they bring something completely different to the table. And you can go into a bar these days and you can take a poll and it's like, hey, like the fights are on. What are you looking forward to most? And a lot of people actually say the female fights. So it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, with with your guys' fight, I think that was the, the probably the biggest one that I was most excited about. Sean Strickland was kind of a new upcoming star. And then Drakus Duplessis, kind of the same, same where you didn't know a whole lot about them. Uh, and then, you know, so I was, I was most excited about you and Myra Buena Silva. Uh, and, and hey, I appreciate fight. that. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely the, I, I, I would mark that one as the fight of the night too. I mean, uh, just because of how it went through all five rounds and you guys having to battle out every single round, uh, it was a lot of fun. It feels like it kind of started off in the first round. I, I feel like it kind of went towards her. I don't know if that was you feeling it out. Oh, uh, for and, sure. You know, and then like, like you mentioned too, you weren't feeling so hot. So maybe it just had to, you had to wear all that off. Um, but I needed to wake up to kinda... say the least. Like, yeah. I saw my coaches, um, it's crazy because I've actually never walked into a fight feeling that way. Um, we were in the octagon, they're doing the announcement and stuff. And I just like, I was not feeling good. There's, there's that cold where it's like, all right, like as an athlete, go sweat it out, feel better. And then sometimes you just really need to listen to your body and you need to lay down and recover. I needed to lay down and recover. Like it was a rough morning. Thank God I had a late call time to the arena. I didn't have to be there till 845. Um, but I spent all morning trying to get my head right, trying to physically feel somewhat decent. Um, to say the least, it was an absolute shit show. But you know what? It was another mountain. And um, I turned around and I climbed that. Uh, I think my biggest concern was trying to get through a possible 25 minutes, you know. Yeah. I felt like I had razor blades in the back of my throat. Sometimes you get cotton mouth, you're wearing a mouth guard. Like there's a lot going on. 
And so it was just like, I was just like, I don't know if this is a good idea. And my coach was like, you know what? We don't care what this fight looks like. We know she's going to break into further rounds. Just drag her into the further rounds. Just get this job done. And it was like, okay. So when they're announcing the fight, like I legit was sitting there having a conversation with the coaches and I told them, I was like, this is going to hurt. And they're like, we just need you to flip some sort of switch. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you guys. And, and um, I just had I had no adrenaline. I was extremely flat. Like, you would have not guessed I was getting ready to go into, like, a fight. Like, usually there's emotion. There's adrenaline. But yeah, you I definitely just, played I it not, off really well. I did not <laughs> feel well. So, yeah, that first round started. And I was like, oh, boy, here we are. And it was like, yeah, I was waking up. Uh, you know, I had phenomenal camp. I felt in great shape. But then as soon as we tied up, I just felt like my endurance went, my muscle endurance just went down the drain. It was, it was rough. Um, but that, hey, that we made explains, it through and now I'm the world champion. Yeah, I mean, that explains a lot too, because there were several times where it's like, man, like I, I, I can tell she's not gassed. It just looks like she's just not giving it the rest, you know, the rest of the, the tank. You know, because <laughs> I think it was in the second round where I thought for sure you were going to knock her out. Uh, she uh, yeah, definitely me too. Wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, was one of those situations wobbly. where like, I seen it in her face and for me like I was like oh my god just throw five more punches but like my butt like I could not get myself to throw five more punches it was easier just to kind of like fall in and I was like all right well here we are in this position mm -hmm. um yeah I was I was absolutely like it wasn't my preparation or anything like I said completely prepared um I just whatever I had going on and battling it for the rest of January and battling it into February like I've never felt so fatigued and it played a part um, but yeah, I, I seen it probably two or three times in the fight interface and it was just like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's something in each and every fight. Um, I wanted a different world title fight for myself. I felt like it was against the perfect opponent to have that opportunity. Um, but you know, I mean, I've always had a career of obstacles and over climbing, um, you know, how to go through adversity. And so that was just another moment in that time. And, you know, the next fight will play out for an even more exciting one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they always say a win is a win, but I've I've definitely been in those situations where, and that win just didn't didn't taste as sweet as it should have. You know, and so correct. I could definitely correct. see that in your face at, at the end of the fight. Uh, did you feel like, oh, I I absolutely won. I I'm a hundred percent confident, or were you a little unconfident? No, I knew I won. I knew the first round I lost. Um, the last four rounds after that, I was like, okay, I definitely like won this. I like I said, I mean, there was just a lot going on um, mentally, emotionally, physically, like I just I wasn't feeling good. Um, and so it was just like it was frustrating because, you know, like I said, I mean, biggest fight being back in the second time for a world title fight, like I wanted to go completely different. But at the end of the day, I'm super proud. I'm super yeah, proud. You, um, you know, I accomplished something. That's the fun part about fighting. Like I'm going to go out there. I'm going to defend my title and the fight can be completely different. Um, so it is what it is, but I mean, there was a little bit of disappointment for me because as athletes, we have such high expectations for ourselves and you go and you put in weeks and weeks and months of preparation. And then for it to boil down to that, like, okay, I got the job done. And like you said, win the win, which is great. That's the ultimate goal. But you know, I want to go out there. I want to dominate. Like I want to do the things that I was doing in the gym, um, really just showcasing everything that I worked so hard on and stuff. Um, so yeah, there was a little disappointment. There was a lot going on. Like same time, it's like I achieved the ultimate goal, but I feel like absolute shit. I want to go lay down. Like it, it was a lot happening. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I, I, I could tell right there. And and knowing now that you were sick and everything, all of that made m much more sense because like I don't know if she realizes she won or if she's just like drained. Uh, I I could tell there had to have been some disappointment because like I said, you 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 had her in several moments. Uh, and but. Regardless, uh, you know, I, I think the way that you guys drew it out uh, and, and went all the way to the end, it kind of exposed my Rabona Silva of her, you know, how long she can last um, because she really, she, you, know, you could tell like at the end of the second round, uh, end of the third round, it just didn't feel like she had anything left. It felt like she just wanted to go to the clinch because that's the only place that she had any kind of energy left. Um, but no, it was, it was an amazing fight. And, and even looking back at the stats too, and just seeing the stats, you can tell how dominant the fight was in your favor on. Uh, so it was, it was a great win. Uh, I know, I know Thank it wasn't the, the ending that you wanted, but it was, it was a very great win. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and at the end, I know you called, called out Juliana, uh, Pena. And I've, I've heard a couple of other times where you've called her out, uh, and, and, you know, to defend your belt. What is it about her that makes you want that fight? 
Um, you know, I mean, we were on the Ultimate Fighter together. Uh, we were teammates and then roommates, and then we were just locked in the house together. Um, she, you know, I figured, I think Dana thought the same thing that on the Ultimate Fighter, we'd be the ones in the finale together. Uh, I ended up winning fight of the season against Jessman Duke. Um, and during that fight, I sustained a lot of injuries. So by the time it took me a semifinal fight, most people don't realize like the short time frame that's filmed in, um, you know, and I had to stay quiet about the injuries because otherwise they have a backup fighter and you get sent home. Uh, so by the time I ended up in the semifinal fight, like it, it was crazy. Like I couldn't punch. I had a broken hand. I had fresh forearm. I had multiple stitches in my eye. I'm getting ready to walk out to that fight. And they're cutting the stitches out of my eye before I bust through the door. It was it was wild. Like, you want to talk about just, like, the mental warfare you go through being in the Ultimate Fighter. But, uh, so anyways, we never matched up um, for it. And I figured during this time frame, I mean, here we are, what, 11 years later since that show? That's crazy to say. It doesn't yeah. seem like that long. But 11 years later, um, and somehow that fight has never happened. So... It's just, it's a fight that I do want to happen. You know, I mean, there's a storyline, there's history there and stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's just the fight that makes the most sense for me. She's ranked number one. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. There's there's some changes happening in the division as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, is, there, is there any talks yet with the UFC on any kind of uh, defense for the title? Yeah, so... Um, we, I actually just spoke to them. Uh, you know, I mean, my last fight camp, I had to get some treatment done and I'm doing some proper rehab now that I have to. Um, so I'm not looking to return until October, November timeframe, but I mean, as far as talks and everything, uh, Juliana's the one that we're talking about. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm really hoping, hoping that, that, uh, it, it goes that way. I mean, I think that's, Definitely the most fun when I look at everyone else. Uh, and I'm drawing a blank on her name. There's another younger, younger gal that uh, has kind of taken the the sport by storm too. I know that that was kind of a discussion that maybe that that she would be the one. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on her name now. Do you know who I'm talking about? <clears throat> no. no, I mean you got uh, Juliana. You have Aldana. Uh, Kayla just entered the division, but I. That's that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, but here's the thing for me. I'm not I'm not opposed to fighting anybody. Uh -huh. um, I love the challenges. Everybody brings a different challenge to the table. I've been that athlete that I've had to work from the ground up. I've never been handed anything. I've never been fast-tracked. Like, in fact, I've gone around the world and back when it comes to my career. And there's a lot of other women in this division doing the same exact thing. And they've been in the UFC for a lot longer. Um, you know, Kayla obviously has a huge hype, hype behind her. She has a big name. I understand the business aspect of it, but as far as being the athlete, like I personally would be frustrated, um, you know, being in the situation as far as being champion, like I'm going to fight whoever, but being that girl who, you know, I've had to, okay, well this fight, uh, will be the number one contender. Okay. No, well, we're going to do this one. And it's constantly switched up. You know, I feel like the other women who are in the top 10 right now, that's what would be happening to them. And Kayla comes in, she's fighting on UFC 300. She gets a win and then it's like, oh, okay, like we want Kayla to fight for the world title. I just don't see that as being fair. Um, so, I mean, I have different perspectives on it. Like I said, um, as being I'm, a champion, I'm, right I'm going to fight whoever. As being that athlete and being in a position, um, you know, I feel like just an advocate for the rest of the division who's been been there for a lot longer and working yeah. at yeah, just I'm, as hard. I'm, I'm right there with you. You know, I, I kind of feel the same way. I thought, I thought the same, I mean, backing up to, I think the most recent I can think of is uh, Drakus Duplessis making the jump up. I think he was ranked number 12 or something like that, if I remember right. And that just didn't seem right to me. Uh, he, he ended up proving me wrong. I think he was much better than I expected. Um, but you know, that was, that was one of them. Uh, and there's, there's well, been some, several others. Yeah, it's even like Mayor Bona Silva, you know, like yeah. I said, I love the challenges and stuff, but I will admit when they called me, um, I figured it would be Juliana, ugh, Juliana and I fighting for the vacant world title. Uh, you know, UFC called and they're like, hey, Juliana's still injured, so we're going to have you fight Mayor Bona Silva. Um, that is not the fight I was expecting. Uh, you know, I mean, you have Irene Aldana, you have these other chicks who have been in there who are in the top five, who've been fighting in the top 10 for multiple years. Um, and it's just like, things just 
I don't know. It didn't make sense. I feel like they kind of, you know, it's awesome because also being in her position, right? Like yeah. she had an opportunity and who's not going to take that. So yeah. there's good things that it's, it's however you decide to look at it. And I'm talking as like just a straight athlete. I'm talking as a fan, like, of course, as a competitor, there was so much more that goes into it. So Mayor had the opportunity and she jumped at it, you know, for me. Okay. I'm fighting for the world title. All right. I like the matchup. Here we go. I'm going to become the world champion is my mind yeah. frame. Um, but I feel like the same thing, you know, they fast tracked her. She didn't have real, really any experience into the top 10. Her first experience was Holly home. And, you know, I mean, Holly hasn't had that it in her last few fights, you know, yeah. the girl that came into the UFC as opposed to her last few fights and the way she's been fighting. So of course, Mary got a big, big win over her. And then now it's like, okay, you're fighting for the world title. Um, yeah. that personally didn't make sense to me, but it all plays out the way it's supposed to. And, you know, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally, totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, you know, looking, looking at it from a fan's perspective, you have to imagine because you see all the kind of the, the trash talk, uh, leading up to the fights. Uh, <laughs> and then of course, going out there and having the ability to look somebody in their face and just try to smash their face into the canvas. Uh, you have to imagine that there has to be total hatred, but I know that's not the case. Uh, I mean, some some people you may just dislike, um, but overall, that's not usually the case. Uh, what what is the kind of behind the scenes relationships with fighters uh, such as yourself? I mean, I know uh, Myro was kind of the same way. I feel like she was talking a lot of trash. You just backed it up with, "I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and perform." Um, what what kind yeah. of is that that relationship between fighters? Uh, and um, you know i mean you do have some athletes in the sport who they genuinely dislike each other that yeah. is there um the other part you know i mean the cameras come out and they put on this poker face and they play the part that they need to to sell the fights and do whatever um so and then for me you know i mean i've been in the sport for a really long time and when i first started this it wasn't about talking shit to your opponent you know i mean you every warrior had respect for each other and you respected the fight and what was going to happen and you hyped up yourself. So this new age shit talking and the way that things have truly changed, uh, you know, I get a lot of question now and people are like, is this scripted? Um, is it more like pro wrestling? And it's like, no, this is very raw, but people are just playing a different part. Um, so that's definitely changed for me. I just, I don't know. I don't find the need to talk shit at the end of the day, the fight's going to speak for itself. I don't want to sit here and run my mouth and then have to spend a year. If I go out there and get an ass whooping, have to spend a year making up for that. Plus trying to hype myself back up. Like it's just wasted energy. Um, and you know, I mean with Mara, she sat there and yeah, she was yapping and I told her, you know, I mean, the fight's going to do the talking, keep talking. Like the fight's going to do the talking. She kept talking. And then after the fight, she was just like, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean any of that. I'm just trying to, um, make money for my family and i and i get it like that's what yeah. this world is now that's what people love to see and everything but i personally i think about just the people who you know are following me my audience the younger kids and for me i know my niece and nephew my daughter my god kids my baby cousins and then so many other kids out there are watching um and i just i don't want to show them how to teach or teach them how to talk shit to each other and do those things so uh, it's just not something of who I am. Um, and I will remain authentic to that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, there's people who they genuinely hate each other. I can probably say that was pretty fair for Misha and Rhonda, um, and some of the guys out there, but for the most part, it's just people are playing a part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's, there's a time and place. Um, and I, I can, re I can respect your, your attitude towards it for sure. Uh, and then there's other guys where, I just think they're just trying to hype them up themselves up so much because you, you see it more with the with the men. I feel like it's just like an yeah. alpha male mentality, you know, just trying to see who can get in each other's head and everything. Um, but no, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's good for business these days, but I don't know. I just like I said, I'm I'm not going to waste the extra energy and do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can respect that that decision too. Uh, well, Raquel, uh, that's pretty much all we've got for you. Thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations on being a world champ. Uh, I hope you enjoy you. it, and I'll be I'll be cheering for you. I guess in October, if that's if that's the return date. Perfect. I appreciate it. It was good talking to you. Absolutely.